In the crafting world, one of the most common file types you're going to encounter is going to be an SVG or a vector. I don't know why I did two because that's they're the same thing. Now, you might also encounter this file type as an AI file, which is Adobe Illustrator, which is pretty much just a program that helps you make SVG files. Now, sadly, a lot of people don't know about SVG files, what they are, how they work, or how to make one. Now, if you're one of those people, then make sure you watch this video all the way through because I'm gonna explain everything that you need to know about SVG or vector files. Now, one of the biggest things that vector files or SVGs are gonna be used for is gonna be for heat transfer vinyl or for adhesive vinyl. So without waiting any longer, let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. Now, what we're gonna need for this is a completely free program called Inkscape. Now the website to this is inkscape.org, but you can also find the link down in the description below. So after you went ahead and installed it, the first thing that you're gonna see when you open it is this. So I already have an image that I found on Google copied over to Inkscape, and there's a couple of different ways that we can go about making an SVG out of this. Now, I don't own this image, but after doing a reverse image search on Google, I found it in quite a few different places, so I can't really pinpoint the original creator, but the whole purpose of this video is to just give you an example of how you can start making SVGs, so that way you understand the concept of them and how to get started creating them. So I guess this is one way that you can steal images but I don't suggest you do that. Do not do that. If you're actually going to use this image for one of your products, support the creator, pay the two or three dollars to get the file. But if you're just getting started and you're learning about SVGs, then you can do this to help you practice. So that way you can get familiar with the tools and all of the nicks and knacks. So let's go ahead and get started. And let's start with the easiest way to create an SVG. One thing you need to know about an SVG is that it works in layers. So SVGs are all going to be a single color. You're not going to find SVGs with gradients. You're not going to find full color SVGs. Full Photos and images are not going to be SVGs. The way these work is with solid colors and with different layers. This video is going to cover the basic one layer design. If you want a more advanced video covering two or multiple layers, then just make sure you comment down below and let me know. So the easiest and quickest way that we can do this using Inkscape is simply by selecting the image, right clicking and going to trace bitmap. Now that's going to bring up this tab over here. And all we have to do is adjust our brightness threshold. So the higher that we put it, the more detail it's going to get or the more colors or shadows that it's going to pick up. So if we take it down, if we cut it down a little bit, let's say to 400 or 0.400, then we can see that it's only picking up the design itself, not all of that extra stuff around it. So let's go ahead and apply. Let's move our background layer out of the way. There we have it. It's actually really clean. It came out really good. Now, as you can see, we have the image here, but everything down here also copied as well. So you have the little heart and the SVG. So if there's something that you don't like, all you have to do is double click it and highlight and delete. As you can see, the mouse pointer also changed. If you look over here, you have the select tool which is the one that you use to simply select and move around. And then right under it, you have the edit paths by nodes. That's the one that it turned into when we double clicked. So if we simply just select the tool up here, you're gonna see that our image has all of these little squares around it. Those squares are called nodes. Now these nodes, you can pull them in tons of different ways and you can adjust them to adjust the actual image. And that's what that looks like. Obviously we don't want that, so Control Z. Let's go ahead and put that back. But this is pretty much the easiest way that you can create a vector or an SVG from an existing file. Now, the other way to do that is through manually doing it using the pen tool. Now, on Inkscape, it's not called the pen tool. It's called the Draw Bezier Curves and Straight Lines or B. But I just call it the pen tool. So what you're going to do here is you're going to go ahead and zoom in as much as you can. So I'm going to click down here on this little corner. And you can see that it created a node and it has this line over here. Now it's going to ask us where to place it. So let's click over here. So we have one there. Let's put the other one over here, over here, over here, pretty much on every corner. Now, if you want to go down to select the rest, what you can do is go ahead and press down the wheel and drag. Now I already know more or less where to put these nodes. And that's something that you're just going to pick up with experience. And after doing this a few times, you're going to know how they work and you're going to get a feel for them. So I accidentally made this one right here, but I don't want it. So I'm just going to hit the delete button and it goes back one. Hit the delete button again. I'm just going to stick it over here. All right, so we've reached the end over here. And all we have to do is click it and it closes in on itself. So now here, as you can see, if we move our bottom layer, we have a very blocky outline of these leaves over here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make it more accurate 
and we're going to move all of the nodes so that way it makes these smooth lines over here. Now, in order to make it stand out more and so I can actually see what I'm doing, I'm going to go ahead and hit shift and I'm going to click one of these colors. So I'm going to choose yellow. And as you can see, the stroke actually turned yellow. Now, if we want to fill the inside, we let go of the shift and choose a color and it'll change the color of the inside. But that makes it harder to see. Now, when it comes to the stroke, another thing I like to do is I like to go over here to the fill and stroke, stroke style, and I like to make it pretty small. So that way I can fit it to the edges and make it as precise as possible. Now, let's go ahead and double click our design or simply just click on edit paths by node or just hit the end key. Now, what we want to do is get these as close as possible to the edge to start making the same shape. One of the ways to do this is simply by clicking in the middle and dragging. So we can drag it over here. That looks pretty good. Now we can do the same thing over here or we can click on the node. And as you can see this big line over here, you can use this to move it around and just make it a bit more precise. So let's put it up here. Like that. Now to get one on the other side, click on the node, click on the shift, and then just drag it out. This whole time I'm holding shift. So we have that there. I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. Whoops, control Z. Do the same thing on this one. Drag out the node. And here, I'm just gonna pull it out. Now, if we click away, you can see this little bump right here. That doesn't look good, and it's not going to be good when we cut it. So let's fix that. For that, you just have to just adjust your node over here. Now, let's say we want to add a node, let's say right here in the middle. Just double click, and the node is automatically added. So we can then adjust this particular spot. So as you can see, I move this one, it adjusts everything up until this node right here. So now we can go ahead and start adjusting the rest of the layer. Now, let me pause here and say that this can obviously, as you can see, get very time consuming. But this is a skill that a lot of people are willing to pay for. You can learn how to vector your images, go on a place like Fiverr, and offer vectorizing services. Not just that, but people in your own community. So if you know other people that do t-shirts, if you know people that have their own crafting business, you can offer them your vectorizing services. So as you see right here, I don't have these little circles. So if I double click in here, then I'm going to have an edge. Now, let me show you what happens if I take out one of these nodes. So I extend this one right here. Now, if I double click it, I get my edge, but I get it with already these nodes sticking out. So that's just one thing that I wanted to let you all know about because I was super confused the first time that happened. So just so you know. Alright, so I finished it. Now let's see how it looks. So there's our outline. So there's our outline. Let's go ahead and choose a color. And that's what it looks like. Let's go ahead and put them side by side. So as you can see, it's actually a pretty accurate replica. It, yeah, it's pretty good. So that's one way to do it. You can go ahead and use the pen tool. Now for these over here, these are obviously a lot easier. You can just go ahead and create a circle using the circle tool. If you hold down the control button, then it makes it a uniform circle. Now, one thing I'm going to let you all know about the circles and any of these other shapes is that a lot of the times they come with a border or a stroke. Strokes can be confusing when you're working with them. Just remember the outside of a stroke is not going to cut. What's going to cut is the center of a stroke. 
So what I do is I just take off the strokes because it just makes it that much easier. So go ahead and hold down shift, click on none. And I don't know if you see that, but that was very minuscule. So it was actually like that. It had that little yellow stroke. When I hit shift and none, it takes it off. Now this line, that's exactly where you're going to cut. That's where your cutter is going to cut the vinyl or heat transfer vinyl. If you have a stroke, let's say, let's say if you have a thick one like that, some people, myself included, can get confused. I used to get confused with this and I would think that the cut would actually be out here when in reality it was down here. So it can really throw everything off. So that's why I usually make it as minimal as possible. And when I'm done, so I can clearly see everything, I just take off the stroke entirely. So I know what's going to cut. So we have that. Now we can just go ahead and replicate that. Let's make the stroke again. And let's remove the inside so we can clearly see what we're tracing. Hold out control. So it's uniform. And there's that. Now to create this inside, let's, let's just go ahead and use the pen tool. Click it here, click it here, and then just click it back. Now I'm going to use my nodes. I'm going to take it out this way. Take it out this way. Now I'm going to use this button up here raise selection to top to bring it all the way to the top. I'm going to fill it in green just so I can see it. And then the bottom one, I'm going to go ahead and fill in dark red. Now I'm going to remove the strokes. Now in order to select both of these, I held down shift and I selected each one. And I'm going to select shift, none, and I removed the stroke off of both of them. Now what I'm going to do is create a hole inside my main red circle. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select my green gap over here, which looking at this one here, it's pretty much this outline, the outline of the actual gap itself. And then I'm going to select the bottom layer and then I'm going to do control minus. And as you can see, it deleted it from the bottom layer. Now let's control Z that. And another way to do this is by going to path and then difference. And that's the difference. Now on the opposite, let's say if I wanted to add this on the outside and make this all one circle or make this all one shape, go ahead and select both control plus and it adds it. So it becomes one. Or you can also simply go to path and union. But that's not what we're going to do. So let's just go ahead and make it like that. Now I'm going to make it the same color as this in order. And in order to do that, I'm going to select, click this little eyedropper tool, select the color and it changes it. Control C, control V, copy and paste. Move that around like that. And there we have both of those sections. Now this right here, the actual moon, this, the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is not going to be by getting the pen tool, clicking it here, doing the inside and then doing the outside. That's just going to take too long. The easiest way to do this is to make the entire thing a stroke. And this is what I mean. So I'm going to go here, take my pen tool, click it on that, click it on that, and then click it back. Get our nodes and let's start pulling them back all the way back here. And this one all the way back here. Now we're going to increase our stroke size and we're going to make it pretty thick. We're going to try to match this over here. So let's change. Let's make it green so we can see what we're doing. Let's make this two. No, let's make this three. Okay. So now I'm going to double click here. So we'll click here. I'm going to adjust these. Remember how I said a stroke is not going to cut? 
So if we send this to cut the way this is, what's going to happen is this is what it's going to cut. It's not going to cut the stroke like that on the inside and the outside. What it's going to do is it's going to pretend that the stroke is not there. And it's just going to cut it like this. So it's going to cut the actual shape of the moon. And that's not what we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring back our stroke, take out the inside. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to path and stroke to path. So that's going to make this stroke our actual path. So now it will cut the inside as well as the outside. And as you can see, it formed all of these nodes. So those are all of the edges. Let's do that. And now let's just go ahead and finish. <laughs> So the tool that I just use right now is this one right here. It's this arrow. And what it does is it just flips everything vertically. So it'll just bloop, flip it like that. I did the same thing for these up here, for the stars in these circles, because I realized it's pretty much the same thing. So let's go ahead and remove the background. And that's what it looks like. So this could have come out a little bit better. If I took my time and I actually, you know, adjusted everything the way I was supposed to, it would have come out a lot better. But that's pretty much the gist of it. That's how you can get started on actually making SVGs yourself. Now, again, this is just for a single color. If you want to learn about multicolors, then just let me know down in the comments below. So hopefully this cleared up everything that you needed to know about creating a vector and how they're used. If you have any other questions, also let me know just down in the comments below. Go ahead and write them there. I always try to get to every single one of my comments. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Huge thank you to everyone for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end of this video. Obviously, if you made it this far, you enjoyed it, you found it informative. So if that's the case, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. My name is Mario with Nico Prince and catch you all next time. Peace.